Welcome to the John Ferraro Chambers here, city, your city council uh, chambers. Today is Monday, December 12th. Welcome to the Public Works and Gain Reduction Committee. I'm uh, Chairman Joe Buscaino. I am joined by Mr. O'Farrell, Mr. Price, and Mr. Rue, members of the Public Works and Gain Reduction Committee. Do you know we have one of our colleagues here, Mr. Englander? I'll have him say a few words, then I know he has to get to, to, um, to committee. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are here today because the status quo is not working as it relates to sidewalk vending. Los Angeles is the only major city that prohibits vending in every type, 24 hours a day, throughout the entire city on approximately 11,000 miles of sidewalks. And it is no surprise that it clearly is not working. The residents of Los Angeles don't agree with this heavy-handed approach because vendors wouldn't be out there if they didn't have customers. And we as policymakers truly believe this activity was such a, a nuisance, if indeed we believed this activity was such a nuisance, and we would um, also make it illegal to purchase from vendors. So the core question the council must answer is whether vending poses a threat so grave to public health, safety, and welfare that it's worth continuing to expand limited police and prosecutorial resources enforcing a citywide ban on all sidewalks at all times. And we don't believe that it does. What's before this committee today, and I'll have to be clear, what's before this committee today is a, a framework that proposes citywide standards of two stationary vendors per block face in commercial and industrial zones with the ability to create special vending zones that have either greater or less restrictions than those standards, including no vending zones. This is a, merely only a, a framework, a, not a complete program with every single detail worked out and every single question answered. But before we can expect city staff to come back with uh, reports and questions answered, uh, we need to decide on the big question first. So I'd like to now turn it over to my partner in um, crafting a comprehensive sidewalk vending policy, council member current price um, for opening remarks. Then after, we'll have Mr. Englander say a few words at the table, and then ask staff to come and present uh, and answer any questions the committee may have and then we'll take your public comment. I do know we have a stack here of speaker cards. Really appreciate um, your presence here. And um, it was important for Mr. Price and I to have a, uh, a committee hearing on this issue to hear from a number of our advocates, our vendors, and our business community members. So with that, Mr. Price. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And first of all, let me just thank you for your, your leadership joining with me uh, on this effort. Uh, you know, we introduced the um, initially almost three years ago, uh, and uh, you were quick to, to, to sign on and, and with, your, uh, with your encouragement and support to uh, help work uh, um, what we know is going to be a, a framework for progress. Special thanks uh, really for the coalition that uh, has been working hard on this issue uh, over the years for businesses, community organizations, uh, and the, uh, the, public, uh, the public family, uh, public work, city attorney, street services uh, and others and individuals who have, uh, have said uh, rightfully so that we've got to have some kind of a policy in Los Angeles uh, largest city uh, in the in the in the western world probably in the world without one um, and we have an obligation to be supportive of small businesses micro businesses uh, street vendors just as we are uh, supporting large uh, multi-million dollar corporations so uh, I'm excited that uh, we have a framework that we think is fair fair to the public fair to the businesses, fair to uh, vendors, uh, fair to the community at large. Uh, and so, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm appreciative of your efforts. And as I said, this is a, an important day for us, uh, one that we know is going to uh, continue to put L.A. on the map uh, as yes. a community that cares about uh, its businesses, large and small, and its community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Englander uh, to the table to say a few words, and I know he has to move on to, I believe it's Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
All right, thanks for having me, colleagues. I truly appreciate it. This is, a, this is an issue that affects every neighborhood, every community, businesses, all the folks, certainly, that are in the room here today. Um, I'm, I'm going to just take a wild guess and say that who here is in support of us doing something to regulate and allow the legal use of our streets for all of you? Is there by a show of hands? So this, this is an issue that touches many lives, and certainly with the scare of what's happening on the national level, um, it's urgent that we do something. And that's what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about. I've actually spent uh, the last couple of years visiting many, many different communities and neighborhood councils and stakeholders to talk about this very issue. Uh, and I'm hearing a lot that we need to do something. We can't just put our head in the sand and pretend nothing's going on uh, and have people living either in fear or certainly having the issue of businesses and having them have confrontations. Uh, but I also want to talk about the ability to do it right, because there's one thing to do it and to pass legislation and regulations, and then it's a whole other thing to do it right, um, the ramifications of which will last beyond our lifetimes, because this is something uh, that will go on in perpetuity. And looking at other major cities across the nation and best practices and studies like New York um, that are regulated, and they've done a pretty good job. Uh, we are not New York, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. In fact, we are many different communities in different cities here just in Los Angeles, the most diverse place on earth. And looking at that, um, we have to apply, and it's hard, different rules to different areas throughout the city of Los Angeles because we're not a one-size-fits-all city. In, in fact, we did this recently where we went back and forth with the mural ordinance and what we would allow in different communities. And it became sort of the same scenario we're talking about now. We had a lot of push and interest from artists in different communities, certainly different ethnicities, different areas geographically, different council districts, and different neighborhood councils to say what would work in every community across Los Angeles. And through that exercise, it was fascinating because we came out with something unique that we never did before. We came out with a program where we can have council districts specifically opt in and opt out, where we had different rules that fit different areas of the city, where we had the ability to say we had communities that wanted murals on single-family homes, and we had other communities that didn't. And we said, well, how are we going to rectify that? How are we going to come up with some resolve? And we, and we did. We put our heads together, and we actually came out with something that made sense. In fact, my district didn't allow murals and didn't want them, on single-family homes, but right after we passed the ordinance, we were one of the first, in fact, the first council district to erect a new mural uh, in a commercial zone uh, right on Reseda Boulevard. So we do have the ability to be creative and understanding and open-minded and listen. I've submitted a letter to all of you that outlines some of the ideas and concerns and suggestions, but I wanted to address a few that I want you to take um, into consideration as we think about this open framework, and we're framing it, as the committee chair said, I want to think about compromise. I want to think about protections for all the people that are in this room and the compromise and the protections for the people that are not, the ones that can't come down and testify because they're running perhaps their own food cart, their own street sidewalk vending, or a brick-and-mortar business, so they can't be down here. So we are representing them as well. So this is a message that I was asked to bring to you from all of my neighborhood councils that I went and talked to. In fact, all of which, um, the ones that weighed in on this within my district, said they like the idea, but they don't want it, and, and we have the fewest, although we have the most vulnerabilities because we have the largest contiguous co uh, commercial industrial and light industrial space in the city of Los Angeles of what's left of it with the Northridge Chatsworth Corridor, which would open this up. And so... That's why I want to make sure we have some protections in place. I, I don't know if it's ever been asked, and some of the things I think we need to tackle so we're not open to any litigation, is does this have any CEQA ramifications? Have we asked the planning department to weigh in or the city attorney from planning to say, look, we've got thousands of businesses operating on city sidewalks that we're about to regulate. 
has there been any environmental review on either A, our liability, or do we have to look at CEQA? And I don't know if that's been, and I, again, I don't know if that's been asked or answered, but I think it needs to. Um, the approval for the landlord-tenant issue. So in thinking about as we go down the road on this, the idea on the commercial areas is two per block. Now, two per block, but you would have to have the business buy-in. Well, what happens if a business changes or the ownership changes or there's a business that wants to start up? And people use the example of a street vendor selling flowers as an example, that it wouldn't be allowed in front of a brick-and-mortar flower store. But that would then prevent a brick-and-mortar flower store from signing a lease and coming in? How often is that reviewed? Is it an annual basis? Does it rotate? Is it the landlord or the tenant? Those are the questions that a lot of my businesses ha have asked me to ask you that we start thinking about. Um, on the other front, in looking at the compromise and what we might want to do, and this is one of the things that I've been thinking about and talking to a lot of the folks that not only are in this room, but people that are very open to the idea of creating a full-fledged pilot program to study it and how it would actually work, which we've done with many other things. We just recently did a very comprehensive analysis and pilot program on on-body cameras, for example, and put them on officers in the street. It was incredibly successful, and we learned a lot of best practices and what works and what doesn't, not just selecting a vendor. We've done it in similar situations with planning as well. So perhaps looking at a pilot program as well so we can get it right. The idea is to get it right. Um, and in order to do that, and we, I think we have to look at some of the ideas and solutions to making sure that the protections are in place for everyone. So I want to thank you to my colleagues for allowing me the time on this critical matter to come in and weigh in, um, to speak up and speak out for all of the neighborhood councils and the stakeholders, the businesses, as well as the street vendors that have come to meet. I wanted to share you one thing with you in closing. We had a major issue in my district where food trucks took over an entire block. In fact, it's now become the largest regularized food truck gathering weekly in the city of Los Angeles. We didn't know what to do. The easy thing would have been to put up signs and said, we're not going to do this. No large vehicle parking at all. And it would have been done. But the community wasn't sure. They said, let's try to regulate it. Let's try to fix it. Let's work with the restaurants they're parking in front of. Let's look at the hygiene, the issues, the cleanliness. We know already, and we're going to face this issue on this regulation, is that the county health department already lacks the resources for enforcement. We tried to get county health to come out just on the food trucks on this one block, and they said we don't have the bodies, yet alone looking at what we're about to do on this legislation and the fact that we contract with the county. In fact, we just had that in our last committee and approved next year's contract on the health inspection with the county of Los Angeles because we don't have health inspectors. They're short-staffed. In fact, it's right on their website. If you call regarding a street vendor, we probably may not come out or it'll take a while because we just don't have the resources. So what are we going to do now with this? So we got to work with them and figure that out. So this, the food trucks, we came in and we created a program working with all the businesses and how they can utilize their restroom facilities, how their customers can, the cleanup pro process afterwards, uh, looking at infrastructure and walkways. In fact, we had put in new traffic lights because of the crowds that were coming, um, invested tens of thousands of dollars into that street and improving the safety because we were going to have people vending on the sidewalks. Um, and we actually formed a, a working relationship through a lot of grassroots, door-to-door -door knocking that I did, bringing people together to say, let's solve for this. The bids, the chambers, the businesses, the food truck operators and the street vendors all came together on a regular basis for two years. We met regularly and came up with the first and the only type of permitting program in the city of Los Angeles and solved for it. And you can come out on any Friday night, and we have thousands of people every Friday night in downtown Old Granada Hills that love it, and it's worked out really well. But it took a lot of work. So I think in looking at this one-size-fits-all model, it doesn't. It's, we have very different, unique parts of the city of Los Angeles we're going to have to identify solutions for, and I think there are ways to get there. I know there are ways to get there. I know the will of this body is to get there. Uh, and so I want to thank you again for putting the time, energy, and resources into this important issue. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Mr. Englitter. Thank you for your comments. With that, um, colleagues, I um, I propose that um, let's take item number one, if you can read item number one into the record, and then we'll bring up some of our uh, city city staff.
Item 1, consideration of recommendations contained in a communication dated November 22, 2016 from Council Members Joe Buscaino and Curran D. Price, Jr., relative to creating a sidewalk vending permit system and related regulations. Thank you so much. With that, colleagues, I, I'd like to bring up um, the city family, and we'll have two panels um, so we can direct some of your questions on the communication of the joint letter from Mr. Price and I. First, I'd like to bring up the city attorney of the Los Angeles Police Department and Bureau of Street Services to come to the table. If you have any specific questions um, for them, now is a good time to ask. Following this panel, we'll have the second and final panel of the CLA, CAO, and uh, Bureau of Engineering. So if you can please come forward and identify yourselves. Thank you so much for your presence. Uh, good afternoon. Gary Harris, Bureau of Street Services. Good afternoon. Rita hernandez Venegas, um, Supervising Attorney of the ACE Program. Commander Todd Chamberlain, Los Angeles Police Department. Good afternoon. Assistant City Attorney Dan Jeffries. Thank you so much. So one of the, the key issues, I believe, uh, was concerning uh, the, um, the council and some of our colleagues is the new Trump administration coming in January and uh, the ongoing threats of uh, deporting undocumented residents uh, throughout this country and uh, those who uh, are undocumented and have a criminal record. We have before us a number of 12,000 vendors who are living in fear, living in the shadows um, of being arrested, uh, being deported, and that's not who we are as a city. We are a city of immigrants. We recognize the contributions that everyone makes in this great city. We also value uh, the hard work that people come into the city and, and provide not only for our local economy but also for their families. Their main goal is to put food on their tables and, and to survive. So um, one of the issues was doing everything we can um, with a sense of urgency to decriminalize vending. And we're, um, uh, we're seeking, one, decriminalization of vending and removing the misdemeanor charge and seeking only fines and confiscation of property as potential pe penalties. So to the city attorney, and great to have... Um, Deputy City Attorney leading the ACE um, program. What changes need to be made to the municipal code to accomplish this? Well, I believe the change would have to be made to take it out of the um, criminal system and um, make it, I, I'm not sure if the council is leading towards an infraction or a fine. And how soon can we have um, an ordinance ready to reflect that? Um, one moment. Ms. Flores here? Ms. Flores. That would be come out of um, Yeah. Thank you, Valerie, Council. for your presence. Thank you. We weren't sure which city attorneys to send up, but um, uh, we could uh, fairly quickly get back to you of 30 days, let's say a very narrow ordinance uh, that would change the penalty structure for Municipal Code Section 4200. We would just need instruction on whether to make it a pure infraction, um, currently, it can a, 40, a violation of 4200 can be prosecuted as a misdemeanor, an infraction, or through the ACE program. Um, if you want it completely decriminalized, then you would be asking us to uh, make uh, penalties only an infraction. Okay, thank you for that. I think the, uh, the sense of urgency is the January 20th inauguration of the new president-elect coming in. So. That's something that uh, is, a, is a concern to a number of, uh, of vendors who um, are in our streets throughout the city of Los Angeles. To the um, Los Angeles Police Department, to Gary, the uh, or street services, uh, as far as Los Angeles Police Department and street services, uh, how can you best collaborate to ensure adequate enforcement? Because the reason why I, three years ago, Second to this motion, it was to ensure that if we have a policy in place and legalized vending, that we need an enforcement arm uh, to hold the bad actors accountable um, for um, addressing and supporting those who are abiding by the rules and regulations. So uh, enforcement will be a critical piece moving forward. And uh, if, I'd like to hear the collaboration between uh, street services investigators and the LAPD. 
we currently have a very good and very close working relationship with LAPD on this and all the other issues that we collaborate on. Uh, certainly moving forward, we can put into effect even better communication between the two agencies where we're now entering the ACE program along with LAPD and this will help us with this type of infraction enforcement to better coordinate what we do with what they do and better track the actual results that we're gaining through ACE. Um, we're also working on increasing our field communication between both agencies and this is something we've been doing prior to this meeting that we're working on for all the enforcement activities we're involved in. So we think that we're already on track to put into effect that collaborative effort that will help us with this proposal. Fantastic. And then from Commander. Uh, LAPD, again, we do have a great partnership with Bureau of Street Services. Um, the one thing for us, obviously, we are going to support LAPD. We'll support what the council recommends and the city institutes. Um, for, for us, as far as the, the, criminal, uh, the, the criminalization aspect and the deportation, um, as LAPD, we are not in that business. Uh, that goes in another arena completely once we process and do what we do. We are here to support and to serve everybody. And that's what our goal and that's what our mission is to do. However, with some of the nuances that are developed or put into place with the vending, uh, there are some good opportunities for us as an organization, LAPD, which would be one, uh, the standardization of best practices, what works in other cities and what we can bring in turn to our enforcement uh, and our LAPD officers. Also, uh, we'd look for some form of self-policing with the individuals involved in that, much like with the ABC licenses. Um, there is a component that they do education, uh, they do work uh, to make sure that the individuals involved in that programs and what they're doing has a clear understanding of what the rules and regulations are to hopefully avoid law enforcement getting involved in the first place. So we hope that that is a big component of it. For the threats, um, without question, is going to be the enforcement of it. If there is an enforcement component, whether it's at a criminal level or whether it's at an infraction or an ACE level, and that is going to be the resource management of that, both from our organization as well as from Bureau of Street Services, I would say, the number of resources to handle the unique problem that goes with it. And also, uh, again, I, I, we hope from within LAPD, and we are here to support what the city family institutes, um, but it is important, I think, uh, to look at some of the best intentions which had some unforeseen consequences and one of those would be 4118D which was instituted which allowed tents to be placed. Um, that became a huge problem for the city of Los Angeles and it became a huge wrestling problem for LAPD and how to effectively and safely and, and compassionately enforce that which in turn led to a number of litigations surrounding that. So as we move into this vending arena, again that's going to be one thing that we hope is LAPD um, that there is rules, regulations, and standards that are set into place because uh, if there is certain areas that are allowed for vending, uh, the, the issue obviously will be the outside, the extremities of those areas where people aren't adhering to the rules and then what can we do as an organization, right. as law enforcement, to impact that, that, that pattern of conduct and to help them make better choices. And then obviously in much the same way with uh, our homeless population, when you look at 4118, uh, a lot of the issues related to that is dealing with the bulky items, dealing with the, the tents, dealing with the items that these individuals have. And I see for us in law enforcement, that's going to be a huge uh, hurdle that we are going to have to get over because if we are responsible for retaining everything that a street vendor who doesn't adhere to the rules um, has, uh, that, that's a, a system right now that we do not have in place, that we don't have the opportunity, the logistics, uh, the time, and really to, to manage that. So that's going to be a threat that we're going to have to, to kind of have to move through as far as resource-wise and logistics-wise. Appreciate that. So clearly, from what I understand, there's uh, good collaboration uh, that exists today between street services and the LAPD, um, which I believe if we move forward on this comprehensive policy, it needs to be stronger than ever. Um, as far as resources, because my concern is if we move forward and allow um, across the board um, legalization of vending. We need to ensure that um, there's adequate resources and staff um, to ensure that, again, the bad actors are being dealt with. And I believe that is going to be part of a report back from uh, CAO and CLA on, on the staffing level. So I really uh, appreciate, and I can tell you on, on being on the enforcement end as a senior lead officer, being responsive to the business and residents that I served as a senior lead officer, it feels like I was chasing my tail in addressing the vending issue um, with the, uh, the siting and or arrests at times to, to know that the following day they 
be still out there. So I know um, that clearly um, having an illegal vending policy in the city of LA does not work. And I do want to at this time turn it over to, to Mr. Price for questions for either the city attorney, LAPD, or street services. I think one of the more uh, certainly exciting progressive portions of this proposed ordinance is the decriminalization. And uh, I think we need to close the loop, though. Uh, certainly going forward, we're talking about uh, decriminalizing. But I think we should look at the pending and, and even past convictions and how uh, perhaps there can be some, um, some adjustment um, um, as we, some kind of an amnesty, perhaps, uh, has been suggested, recommended. I'd like for that to be a part of the, of the discussion uh, when you come back to us. Uh, the notion of businesses uh, being able to provide consent for a prospective vendor is, is that uh, kind of novel here in Los Angeles? Is that something that's uh, sort of been in existence in other, uh, in other municipalities? Uh, well, as that applies to other ordinances that street services enforces, there are, like our street furniture ordinance, we do allow the businesses to have a say in where that can be placed. Uh, as with our special event ordinance, we allow the uh, affected businesses to have a say in those issues. So it's not inconsistent with the way we do other ordinances uh, in the city now. Just something we need to develop further. We want to make sure there's not uh, just arbitrarily rejection, but there's some rationale for approving and or disapproving as that, uh, as that moves forward. Um, the idea of enforcement obviously is going to be a big deal. Uh, and from you experts at the table, do you, you think we'll need to develop a separate uh, kind of enforcement uh, body over time? Or is that something that uh, uh, is less desirable, more desirable, as long as you have the number of personnel required to perform the, the, uh, the enforcement? You know what, I think right now it's, it's, it's for us, uh, LAPD, I think it's too early to say. Um, I don't know if there's going to have to be a specialized unit within LAPD that would be assigned in collaboration with uh, street sanitation. Uh, but I can tell you that without question it's, it's, it's going to involve resources and it's going to involve personnel to effectively uh, manage this. Um, I think like, again, like we talked about before, some of the good intentions will definitely have some issues within them. And uh, I think it's going to be some level of subject matter expertise to make sure that the individuals that do have contact with this particular endeavor have a clear understanding of what the rules and the regulations are and able to impact it and do it effectively. So, yeah, it's definitely going to involve uh, something. And, again, I think that's going to also, as far as the enforcement arm, you know, Bureau of Street Services, hopefully they are going to have a huge, huge component in it in, um, in much the way, same way we look at L.A. San right now with sanitation uh, involved specifically with 5611. And for street services, we definitely think that resources are a very important part of this project, and we do think it will take additional resources. But it's not just resources. It's also adjusting the way we do enforcement. One of the things mentioned was currently the health department has some limitation to the ability to provide resources to the city for enforcing the health code. Uh, one of the things we hope that would be looked at as we went down this uh, project and looking at how we do this is the possibility of entering some type of agreement with the health department that would allow city enforcement officers to exercise some of those powers in confiscating those health hazard items from the street. Right now we currently can't do that, and we can only do that when we're accompanied by the health department, which in some respects limits our ability to, to do the job properly, uh, especially since the county has such limited resources. So we hope that we can partner with the county to share some of that authority with the city to make our resources that we do have more effective at doing that job. Okay. Thank you. No, I, I, I agree. The, uh, <clears throat> the enforcement is important. Also, the, the education and outreach is going to be important, uh, you know, collaborating with community-based organizations, making sure vendors, prospective vendors know the rules and regs, and also that businesses understand what the, what the rules and regs are. And so I think as long as we have that, that open communication, uh, everyone wins. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Price. With that, uh, Mr. O'Farrell, please. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Uh, I also want to uh, acknowledge your leadership and that of our colleague, Corinne Price, on this very important matter on something that everyone knows has gone on for decades in Los Angeles and is only growing in popularity, and that is sidewalk vending. It's part of our cultural fabric, 
and I've always believed that regulation can work, and bringing this underground economy out of the shadows legally and literally. Uh, and uh, as we proceed with uh, this legalization of vending, I want to be sure that we also adopt adequate health and safety standards, as well as take into consideration the sensitive areas where vending may or may not make sense. And uh, this is more or less outlined in your, in your uh, framework here, especially in the, the uh, preamble. Uh, clearly, for all involved, a new, well-regulated policy on sidewalk vending will enhance the cultural experience of our city. Uh, it also has the potential to support and encourage entrepreneurial opportunity and economic benefits um, as long as we get this right. Uh, and that's, I think, what, why we're all here. We want to make sure uh, that the policy that we enact in the city, uh, as Mr. Englander actually mentioned, not a one-size-fits-all, but a policy that works for the city of Los Angeles. So having said that, uh, I have a number of questions that I'd like to, to go down, uh, if that is uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, some of these are just concerns uh, uh, and just questions that I have that um, maybe we can look for in the reports back, um, including the definition of adjacent property owner, basically having veto power. Um, that sounds really good on paper, but it could be challenging in a few respects. Um, one is, I think, adjacent property owner is defined by the property owner of the address where the vending will happen in front of. Um, I don't know that that would take into account next door to that address. If I am a hot dog restaurant and a hot dog vendor is allowed to set up next door but on the sidewalk, um, I think that brings up real uh, questions in terms of um, striking the right balance between what's fair between the vendor and the business who pays you know, for the brick and mortar, um, all of the local county, state requirements, all the overhead, employees, et cetera. Um, at the same time, uh, you might want to look at a block-by-block -block approach to that rather than just saying adjacent property owner. Property owner. Um, we know that uh, oftentimes when a lease is taken out, there are um, sort of sometimes what's called a triple net lease taken out on a commercial property, which forbids a competitor from taking out a similar lease on the same property. Maybe we look at that model so that we don't end up with the unintended consequences of having a proliferation of like-minded vending in front of stores that sell the same product. Um, that's just something to heavily consider. Uh, also, I think that we need to define what is residential. Um, Residential, are we defining it as R1, R2, the mixed, you know, the mixed use areas, R6, R4, all sorts of zoning across the city. So, so what does that mean in terms of uh, residential definitions? Uh, now, some questions I have in relation to the permit rule. Uh, can you clarify exactly what regulations will be codified in the ordinance versus what rules and regulations will be adopted? by the Board of Public Works. In other words, will a set of standing rules exist in the Board of Public Works so that once we adopt an ordinance, it can be modified through the Board of Public Works, in other words, in other words fine-tuned based on real-life practicalities of the enactment of this ordinance. Otherwise, if we change one little thing about it, it would have to come back to the full City Council for a vote on a modified ordinance. Has that been considered? I believe we're hoping, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Ms. Flores has the answer as I've not worked on any ordinance. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the ordinance could specify that the Board of Public Works and the Bureau of Street Services could act as the designated administrative authority for the permit system, and you could, with general parameters, uh, give them guidelines uh, in the ordinance, and then um, the specifics about the rules and what would actually go into the permit, uh, you could delegate to the Board of Public Works. Terrific. Thank you. And, and uh, 
while you're, while you're there, Valerie, uh, what do you interpret from this framework as, as residential, defined as residential, all residential? Again, you know, that's a policy call for, for the council. Uh, you uh, could use zoning um, guidelines or you could, um, you know, make your own designation uh, depending on, you know, preferences. So there's a lot of mixed use in the city. There's a lot of multifamily. So um, it, it's really a policy call, but we can draft the ordinance um, to accommodate whatever concerns you have. All right, so you'll await further instruction from this body on the direction uh, that we should head in, in in relation to that? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and then in terms of 4200, 4200 covers a lot of things, including regulation of news racks, mm -hmm. which have historically been a real problem, a real blight across the city and on a lot of our major corridors. So the question in terms of the decriminalization, we, I'm totally in the school of let's decriminalize anyone trying to make a living. Make no mistake about that. But there are other nuisance, uh, nuisances that, that this body and elected officials before we came along, before this generation, worked very diligently on addressing and we've made improvements. So in relation to the uh, Bureau Street Services working on recommendations for updating the news rack provisions in LAMC 4200, I understand. So yes. can we ensure that the news rack permitting issues are not decriminalized? And uh, other, yes, we, other things that are important within the 4200, 01, 02, 03? We, we can uh, separate uh, street vending into its own ordinance near 4200, uh, but by separating into its own ordinance, we could give it its own penalty structure without disrupting the penalty structure for other parts of uh, the 4200 sec uh, area of the law. So that can remain as it currently is in terms of penalties. I'm sensing that's the way this should go without having all the answers in front of us, but uh, I think that's a, well, again, could have been or could be one of those unintended consequences of we overlook that and then we have these other issues that pop up. Um, and then special districts. Will the city be able to establish special vending districts at the same time that the sidewalk vending permits start being issued? In other words, all at the same time rolling out? Uh, yes, you can carve out um, certain districts, as you said, either for greater or lesser regulation uh, at the same time, even if they're in the works. Okay. Schools. For recommendations 4D and 4F, um, I would like the CLA and CAO to please include recommendations for requiring consent from the school. We mustn't overlook the schools uh, and what works in, for some schools and what doesn't work for other schools. They're vastly different from neighborhood to neighborhood as well. Uh, in terms of requiring consent from the school if a vending permit is within 500 feet from a school. Um, I think that that should be something that we incorporate into the recommendations. Otherwise, I think there's gonna be a sense of bewilderment for why they weren't included. Uh, and then outreach for recommendation 4H uh, I'd like the CLA and CAO to please ensure that recommendations for an outreach and education campaign cater to all involved, vendors, businesses, property owners, et cetera. I think that's really, really important. And uh, Mr. Harris, something you and I talk about all the time, resources for Bureau of Street Services, Street Use Inspection Team. Do you have any preliminary estimate on how many more inspectors we need to provide adequate enforcement. In the previous report, we recommended 17 field investigators, but that was based on another set of parameters. In looking at what's currently being proposed, uh, our recommendation might be a little greater, but our base number we started with was 17. Okay. And I, I would argue that you need many more based on my own real life experiences with your department. Uh, and I think you're being very, very cautious and generous. Uh, but I think with the ACE program, and folks, ACE is Administrative Code Enforcement, and that's a program to help um, uh, address the quality of life issues facing our neighborhoods, parties that are too loud and, and things like that. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm excited about the partnership with ACE uh, in relation to this. But I think with that, our police and our street use inspectors need additional resources. Yep. Uh, I'm preaching that the gospel of that. And especially in terms of we're, we're in the middle of essentially working up to the budget. Uh, we, if, if we want this program to work, and I, and I know it can, then it is up to us to prioritize so that the resources are available to make it work. Uh, otherwise, we're only doing the job halfway. Uh, and then in relation to permit rules, in this current framework, will corporations and businesses be able to receive vending permits as well? Because it's kind of a two-way street. We know that a lot of vendors in trucks or carts uh, are building their business into a brick-and-mortar presence. Uh, but it could also work in the other direction in terms of, of branding and free market economy. So what's the answer to that? Is the current framework um, allow businesses to receive vending permits as well? I would imagine the answer is yes because anyone can get a, a permit, but I'm not sure Absolutely. exactly. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, I think, right? It's, it's, yeah. This is all about making opportunity available for everyone, right? right? Um, all right, so those, those are some of the questions that I have. Uh, and uh, I think if we, if we do this very, very uh, diligently, we look at all of the questions. And, uh, well, actually, I, I take it back. One last is, you know, the, the whole opt-in conversation was taking place uh, at, during the round of community meetings. And one of them I hosted myself in the 13th District because this is an issue that's very important. And we have a lot of, I have a lot of constituents who make their living uh, with sidewalk vending, so I want to make sure that their concerns and questions were answered as well as businesses. So the whole opt-in was uh, emerging as um, one of the leading sort of components to this before that round of community meetings ended. Uh, and I don't see it in the framework, and if, if, uh, if that is still uh, an option, maybe, maybe the equal to that is forming special districts. I'm not quite sure. So if my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to clarify, Mitch, the, so the opt-in would serve, the special districts would serve as an opt-in. I believe it's easier in force if we legalize vending and um, if indeed by creating special districts, as, as uh, Mr. Price indicated, we, it'd be easier to enforce moving forward. Um, Thank you so much for the, the input and the recommendations. I'd like your recommendation on 4D to add the uh, add schools as far as allowing them, getting the written consent of the adjacent schools as well. And again, this is merely an opportunity for us to propose a framework to go to council and get an ordinance back, at which point, as we all know, uh, we send the ordinance back to committee, at which point we can, we can amend, um, gut and amend, as they say, back in, up, up in Sacramento. So with that, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Councilman Price, for your leadership on this matter. And, and I do know, understand that this is going to be our first draft of the ordinance, and we'll have an opportunity to re revise or revisit these issues. But I had a couple of quick questions, and I'm just going to um, – I have a lot of questions, but I'm just going to focus on just a few. Uh, since we're talking about decriminalization uh, and following Councilman Roe Farrell's questioning, um, a citations. So, I mean – it's pretty clear from the council, from the uh, committee here, that we're trying to decriminalize. But when does an A citation become uh, a misdemeanor, or can it become a misdemeanor? Yes, the ordinance allows um, at the once a, a citation is presented to the city attorney's office for processing, uh, a misdemeanor can be filed at that time, or once a citation has been processed and the violator has been notified um, what the violation has occurred and what their rights and responsibilities are. They have the opportunity to request an initial review within 20 days of receiving uh, the citation in the mail. At that point, the ordinance allows a misdemeanor to be filed. Those are the, at the only two times that a misdemeanor can be filed um, for an A citation. You know, I'm a little concerned there because obviously um, for this target population, they might not be language capable or they might not even have a proper mailbox for um, you know, notifications of these potential citations. Um, and 20 days might not be enough. Um, 
or even the fines structure for the ACE program um, for them for their paying their citation. Have you guys thought about some sort of graduated program or some other um, ways to revise? Well, in order to um, actually issue a citation, the person has to have a valid ID and a valid address. Once those citations have been processed and we are notified that the mail has been returned due to a lack of bad address, we do try to attempt to locate a good address to resend that citation to. Um, and we're unable to, to reserve that person, um, then it just sits in, in, um, in a bad address and those citations ultimately get rejected because we're unable to serve them with the notice of the violation, the fine payment due. Then it would not be a misdemeanor. It, wouldn't, it, it would not be a misdemeanor. Okay. But no. if it was delivered, um, is it delivered in uh, multiple languages or just English? It is delivered in, in English. But um, we've been, the ACE uh, program has been in existence. Well, actually, we've been citing since 2015. We have not filed any misdemeanor matters for 4200. Well, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to. Uh, put it on notice that I have, I have concerns about that part because we're protecting on the front end, but we also want to protect decriminalization in the back end. So I'll just wait for the first draft to come back and we can work on that because I want to get to the second line. Um, the uh, In the recommendations, I believe it's recommendation three, can you explain the rationale for creating a baseline of two stationary vendors per block face? Again, I, I think that's a policy call for the council, yeah. how many uh, right. vendors, and again, it might vary by district, and some districts more might be acceptable and some districts less. So, uh, I understand it's going to be an ultimate policy decision uh, from our committee and the city council, but how did the two, how did we even start at two? Because obviously all blocks are different sizes and... Yeah, I, 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 again, I think the... the um, okay. The authors of the this report, okay. you know, we're actually putting that out as a starting method to, you know, sort of suggest some limit. Okay. But I kind of uh, assume that the the call for a special district was to accommodate okay. the varying needs of different communities. Could you possibly then? Can you possibly elaborate on the recommended um, residential baseline restriction, uh, and or also? define what commercial is. And the reason I ask that is because we have a lot of mixed juice um, uh, areas now, so. So we do have our, you know, zoning definitions of residential and commercial. Um, my, uh, my assumption from the report was that residential often is a more sensitive uh, use. And so, um, you know, they, there's maybe a desire to have less vending in residential uh, areas, but again, the, the council doesn't have to adhere strictly to, you know, standard zoning uh, labels. Um, so you could define residential as any block that has a single or multifamily residence on it um, if, if your concern is to keep or limit the amount of vending in residential areas where families may be. Or okay. increase it depending, uh, again, if it's going to be healthy food, you may want to uh, take a broad definition of residential. Yeah. That's probably another yep, vague area. Uh, and just one one more area, Mr. Chair, if you allow me. Absolutely. On 4D, um, you know, in order for the system to work, we need to have the rules that allow enough street vendors to participate to fund the fees that enable the city to enforce the rules. I mean, I, I definitely want to protect our neighborhoods. But at the same time, if, if we make it so uh, restrictive and we have nobody able to uh, get these licenses, then we have no money to fund this program. So, um, uh, with the so I'm asking with a provision requiring property owners or business owners consent. I don't know if that's going to be it, the vendors are going to be enough vendors um, to gain permission to vend for the system to survive. What do you have? You guys considered that? Well, there are a couple options. The council um, could choose to subsidize the cost of the permits. Um, the also. Um, by forming special districts, it could make it easier for um, vendors to gain the consent because the, the city could help coordinate the, the obtaining of the consent of all the businesses in the district. Um, so there are multiple ways to help ease the burdens on um, the actual permittees. Um, 
Okay, well, let me go on a different line then. Um, liability issues. Uh, you know, uh, if, if we have property owners, well, is liability incurred if a property owner actively grants consent uh, to a vending activities on a sidewalk or the property owner's um, frontage? Um, we, we can look into that issue and report back, but you know maybe the permits could um, require the permittee to release the uh, adjacent businesses and the city from liability. Okay, yeah, I, I'd love to see that portion of the in the ordinance how it gets written up. And um, on that note, what about cleaning? Pardon? Uh, cleaning. Yes, the, uh, the ordinance could specify that the vendors are responsible to keep a trash receptacle uh, available for their customers and also to keep a certain perimeter uh, clean. Yeah. And again, if none of these follow, again, it would be an enforcement issue, right? Right, so there would, that would be part of the permit, so there could be uh, fines or even if it was serious, a, maybe a permit revocation. All that time. Thank you so much. And I need a, a clarifying statement. I meant so, Valley. If you can just educate us. I believe the city council years before we arrived um, established an opt-in policy that's in existence today. That's my understanding. So clearly, the opt-in it's a free-for-all today, and it doesn't work. And to to clarify what I said. Special districts allow opt out, um, allow folks to opt out or areas to opt out. That's my understanding. Okay. Right, it could be structured that way. And can you just bring us back to why the city established an opt in um, policy? It, it, you know, I don't know the history of that, but my understanding was um, the, the lack of success of that program had more to do with um, insufficient enforcement. Um, than maybe the structure, so we're back to the funding request. Understood, understood. And today we have now over 20,000 vendors um, throughout all, all corners of the city. And to Mr. Englander's point, if so if Mr. Englander's, uh, say, business district does not want to have vending, he would form his own special district through either council motion, public works, or um, through the petition of the businesses to opt out of this policy before us, right? Right, again, yes, that you could structure the ordinance that way. Okay, great. Okay, so with that, um, any other questions for our panel? I do want to bring up our, hearing none, I do want to bring up our second panel, um, the CLA's office, CAO, and engineering for uh, any questions you may have on the, uh, the joint letter, uh, the proposal of Mr. Price and I's proposal moving forward. And then we'll head to uh, speaker cards. And I do know we have a number of, uh, number of folks who have joined us in the overflow room, so please be patient um, and we'll be beginning the, the public comment portion of the committee uh, soon after this panel is completed. Good afternoon. If you can please identify yourselves. Felipe Chavez with the CLA's office. Hi, Ted Allen, Deputy City Engineer with the Bureau of Engineering. Thank you so much. So my just main question overall, what, um, any, uh, do you have any questions on the joint letter that Mr. Price and I um, brought forward, or do you need any direction from us regarding the intent of the policy? We, we have read the, your proposal, and we believe it provides sufficient guidance for our office. Okay. Ted? Yeah, our, so the Bureau of Engineering's mentioned as far as the sidewalk inventory that we're doing as part of the rebate program, and we're underway with that now. We expect it to be done in approximately nine months, so that will be available as a tool. Okay. In the meantime, what's the visual, visual inspection, or what is there a grid or an identification of streets that would be suitable and not suitable? That's the whole idea. As far as the inventory? As far it, as street bending. If, if this were enacted prior to having that inventory available, uh, one potential option, depending how wide scale the rollout is, what we're doing with our sidewalk program is we're manually creating sidewalk elements as needed um, in 
certain areas while we wait for the citywide assessment. So we could do something like that potentially. Okay. And as far as the, um, say the, the, the property, one of the requirements would be to seek um, written consent of the adjacent property owner. So my understanding is the, the property owner owns the underlying um, street all the way to the center line of the street. That's my understanding, right? In, in most cases, that's correct. There are a few exceptions here or there where the street itself is a parcel owned by the city, but those are pretty rare. Uh, in most cases, the property owner owns the property and fee title to the center line of the street, or sometimes right. it's a little bit off the center line because the center line used to be old. Um, but in general, yes. And then the public right-of-way is an easement to the city, which grants us so much authority that we treat it not like really part of their property anymore. But if the street were to be vacated, it goes back to them. They do still un own that underlying fee and title. And the city needs cases. to assure that uh, the sidewalk is passable, accessible, obviously. Yeah, in our normal permitting process, that's one of the things we check for when things are being installed in the sidewalk area is that there's proper ADA compliance and, and things like that. And the Bureau of Engineering needs to ensure that uh, if um, you have a stationary uh, cart or a table selling product, that they, they, the sidewalk would have to be wide enough to accommodate the vending. Correct. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Bureau of Engineering, but we do that on a lot of programs. But somebody would need to do that. So as you can tell, colleagues, there are a lot of hands in place here that uh, need to be involved in this overall um, decision of policy decision making. And I think we have a strong team moving forward to sure we have um, everyone involved from the city attorney, street services, BOE, um, of course, LAPD. So moving forward, this is exactly what we're trying to seek, the uh, comprehensive strategy on uh, legalizing street vending, but also having the right people at the table to ensure that it's, it's done correctly. So any questions on our second and final panel? Mr. O'Farrell. Just, just one comment on one of the questions I asked at the first panel. And really, I'm, I'm just, the whole permission from the adjacent property owner is kind of sticking in my crawl. And it seems that the approach we should take, I think we, which should be more fair to vendors and more fair to businesses, is some sort of radius in relation to non-competition, non right? Uh, because that's, that's, I think, what troubles uh, small mom and pop shops. They're concerned that with all the overhead they pay, that they could be undercut uh, if there is a, a, a street vendor nearby who could potentially undersell them. So if we thought in terms of more of a radius and non-competition than veto power in, a, in an area where vending is supported and popular, that would keep personalities out of the equation. Uh, so I just wanted to, to put that out there again. Um, because I think it's different approaches, different numbers of vendors per street segment are, are going to differ from neighborhood to neighborhood. Uh, and so, um, and it would, I think that would leave less room for shenanigans. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I would concur with uh, Councilman O'Farrell's um, vendors and similar businesses. Yeah, uh, it would be uh, a little unfair. So um, I would concur with that. Very good. And uh, looking forward to getting the ordinance back. We just need to get full city council approval <laughs> to give them the direction, and then we can hash out these uh, issues when they come back to uh, committee. So any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your presence. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'd like to open um, this item up to public comment. And there are a number of speaker cards here. Really appreciate your presence. Uh, you will be given one minute um, to uh, per, per, um, to speak on the item, so that we can accommodate everyone and um, and move forward. Um, so with that, um, for those in the overflow room, give us a few. We're gonna if you hear your name, please come into the John Ferraro Chambers uh, to speak. So again, one minute per person. I'd like to first call up um, Rick Coca, representing Council we Councilman Weezar's office. Rick. Rick will be followed by David Gonzalez, representing School Board Member Monica Ratliff's office. Okay. 
Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair, and thank you all the committee members for considering this item today. Uh, Rick Coca with the Councilmember Jose Huizar's office. As the uh, original writer of the motion along with Councilmember Price, we've spent com considerable time and energy on this issue along with the, with the advocates and really all, all segments of the community from the business uh, to uh, folks interested in this issue. And we are pleased that it is and relieved that it is actually moving forward. Um, definitely in the political environment that we're in, uh, it is uh, uh, you know, imperative that we act on this. Um, and, and really uh, on another level, uh, and the reason why the advocates came to us and asked us to do something that industries don't normally do, which is regulate us. That's what they asked us to do. And so uh, we need to move forward with it because for them, uh, you know, they are doing what we all want to do, and that is providing for their families, trying to create their own version of the American dream here in the city of Los Angeles. As my boss says, we are a city of immigrants, and we need to honor them and honor their work. The system we have now, as we all, you know, recognize is broken from the business side, from the vendor side, uh, from the public health side. And so we need to create a system that allows, while complicated as it may be, allows us all to to get to a place where uh, we see the benefits and it is a win-win-win for everybody involved. And so uh, we look forward to this effort and we uh, support it wholeheartedly. Thank you so much. Thank you. David Gonzalez. Good afternoon, honorable members of the council. My name is David Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of LASD school board member Monica Ratliff, and I'm here to read a statement um, on her behalf uh, you've already actually addressed some of her main issues. So, Board Member Ratliff, uh, from Board Member Ratliff, I commend your efforts to address uh, the long-standing issues of illegal sidewalk vending. Um, as a board member um, representing over 130 public schools and serving 100,000 students in the San Fernando Valley, I would like to express the significant concerns of my school communities. Sidewalk vending has been a particular nuisance uh, for public schools. During the impacted hours after school, uh, food vendors are an additional source of congestion impacting the safe exiting of schools and pose a potential hazard to students, families, and other pedestrians. This year alone, Carver Middle School, Harmony Elementary School, Lizarraga Elementary School, and Pocoma Middle School have had to work with LAPD to address these kinds of issues. I appreciate the proposed framework maintaining the prohibition of sidewalk vending within 500 feet of a school, and I strongly urge you to reconsider the exemption for uh, vendors selling healthy food. Regardless of the type of food sold, um, sidewalk vendors will cause issues relating to access to the sidewalks. Um, I urge the City Council to give the same consideration to our schools as opposed to businesses in regards to um, providing uh, consent to vendors in their vicin uh, vicinity, and I encourage you to reach out to the LAUSD. Thank you for your consideration and service to our communities. Thank you, and please thank the school board member for her leadership. Uh, next up, Barry Johnson representing the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Um, the Studio City Neighborhood Council have submitted a community impact statement, at which point I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Johnson to the table. Um, and any neighbor council that submits a community impact statement are given five minutes to speak on the item. So Mr. Johnson representing the Studio City Neighborhood Council. And thank you, Barry Johnson representing Studio City Neighborhood Council. And you do have our community yes. impact statement. And I would like to um, also thank uh, the committee for the concept of one size doesn't fit all. It, it did seem to serve us well in the mur mural ordinance, and we hope it will do so with this, uh, this ordinance as well. Um, and I wanted to thank you for the November 22nd letter, which uh, spells out a lot of our concerns that we initially had with this ordinance, but we still have concerns that sidewalk vending should be limited to areas of the city that elect to have such activity in their area. The city should establish an opt-in to a special vending district rather than an opt-out process for each area of the city where sidewalk vending will take place. Also regarding um, enforcement and penalties, there needs to be a sufficient budget allocated to the enforcement of penalties sidewalk vending permit fees, we would hope, would support proper enforcement of this ordinance. And um, the only areas of the city where sidewalk vending should be allowed to take place should be within vending districts established under an opt-in program. And regarding business improvement districts, 
we would ask that no street vending should be allowed in a bid district unless 90% of the businesses as well as 90% of the property owners approve a special biz business vending district within their bid. And finally, regarding um, the automatic and comprehensive review, um, we would hope that there would be um, an automatic review process, um, but also an annual renewal process for each vendor, vendor issued a sidewalk vending permit. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is um, Patty Berman, representing the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. Patty here. Case. Carol Schatz. Carol will be uh, followed by Blair Bester from the Historic Core BID and Ellen Endo. Please, if you heard your name, please come forward. Carol Schatz, president of the Downtown Center BID. Uh, thank you for hearing many of our concerns about the impacts of street vending and making them a part of this proposed framework, especially two vendors per block and property and business owner consent, these are the most important of those considerations. Councilman Price, uh, you have said repeatedly that one size does not fit all in our diverse city. Since an opt-in model didn't make it into the framework, the business property owner consent and a simplified and easier opt-out provision are the only ways to assure that communities have an appropriate say about vending. The health, safety, and welfare language, we would ask you to reconsider and eliminate that language as a result. And Councilman Buscaino, and I say this to both of you with the greatest respect, and you know that I mean that. You have said that enforcement is key to a rational policy. We support the decriminalization, but the framework is very sparse on enforcement. And as you just said today, it is extremely important to making sure that a good regulatory system exists. We support a good regulatory system. Thank you. Thank you. Blair Bester, uh, Ellen Endo, I'm Ellen. and uh, Feliz McGinnis, please come forward. Your name, ma'am? My name is Ellen Endo. I'm president of the Little Tokyo Business okay. Association and the oh. Little Tokyo Business Improvement District. Um, I'm here on behalf of our businesses. We are a merchant-based bid, uh, which consists of 430 businesses. Most of them very small. Uh, most of them um, are owned and operated by immigrants. And so um, we've, we've been very interested in this, in this subject for some time. And, we, and we, we all know that the devil is in the details. And we're hoping that while we support the, um, uh, the proposal and it's a step in the right direction as far as we're concerned, that we, we really want to make sure that enforcement, implement, implementation, and um, uh, the, the, the kinds of uh, practical steps are taken as well. So uh, while, you know, like I said, we're, we're in support of decriminalization, we also think that uh, there, there's work to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Clerk, we're going to um, end speaker card submittals okay, at this point. Hi. You called me from the other room, so it took me a while to get here. Patty Berman, I'm the president of the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. You have our comments on file. Did you I, submit a community impact? Hold our time. Did you submit a community impact statement? We did, yes. Okay, so you have five minutes um, with the Downtown um, Neighborhood Council. I, I think our largest concerns were about enforcement. We very much agree that having just a don't do it policy does not work, but a framework has to be constructed in a way that it's fair to everyone, especially the area that we can have, which is downtown. We have areas within downtown, such as the Fashion District, where there is already problems because of the vending. We need to know that areas will be able to take care of themselves, that we can't paint this with one brush. Even within our territory of downtown, we have many different areas, some of which would do very well with stationary vending on corners, some of which are already overrun 
with vending. We ask that you take a look at each area separately and give us the option to have these in our area or not. But our largest concern is enforcement. We do not feel that 17 people is enough to enforce uh, an issue that is this large. And we really want to make sure that before any law is put into, into effect, that the means to enforce it and to properly take care of the citizens has been done and that the money has been set aside to pay for this enforcement. This is all very important to us. The businesses that we have downtown, we've worked very hard to bring them there. You know we've been going through a renaissance and we're still having growing pains. We want to make sure that they are respected and that they get what they need. These are all small businesses, many of them, that are just struggling and we want to make sure that nothing happens to hurt them. So please make sure that this ordinance is fair to everyone and that we have enforcement rules in place and most important, the funding to have the enforcement happen. Thank you. Thank you. Blair Bester? Blair, Blair Beston, Historic Core Business Improvement Weston. District. Thank you so much. That's okay. Um, thank you all for your comments, um, uh, thoughtful comments so far today. Um, in three and a half years, the Historic Core has opened well over 100 small businesses in the ground floor retail, and most of those are owner operated. Um, very small businesses, and these are the backbone of our community. It's what makes the Historic Core um, a desirable place to come, and they also are incredibly supportive to the city. Um, Build-outs and permits are expensive, and requirements are strictly enforced. So as we move forward, we just want you to please consider allocating funding to enforce fairly and equitably, and um, also that neighborhoods should be able to decide and that property owners who are now fully liable for sidewalks should get to weigh in on city sanctioned commerce happening there. Thank you. Thank you. Your name, ma'am? Yes, good afternoon. I am Felice McInnes. Felice, hold on, please. Um, I'm going to call the next three speakers, Martha Salcedo, Ellen Rialto, and Sarah Walsh. Please come forward. Ms. McGinnis, thank you. You may proceed. Yes, I, I know that New York has had a vending in place for quite a few years, and I don't understand why Los Angeles can't simply adopt what New York has already proven to be successful. Uh, my comments are, permits should be given to citizens or those with legal status to be in this country. I am constantly feeling that I'm overlooked because I am a citizen for others who don't even bother to go through the process. Second, neighborhood councils should not have the right to opt out of having street vending in their district, but should have a say as to where and what should be sold. Example, if an area already has restaurants, more food is not a necessity, yet art and high-end handcrafted items might be, that are produced in front of the public might be an asset. Example, a potter with their traditional wheel or a spinner making yarn out of sheep's wool. Third, ensure fairness in permit distribution so that cultural diversity is maintained. Fourth, time of operation should be extended from sunrise to sunset and neighborhood councils should make the final decision as to what Thank best you. operating time suit their community. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Martha Salcedo, followed by Ellen Rialto. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, City Council members. Um, first, I just want to say that we greatly appreciate your leadership and efforts to set forward a framework for street vending that is structured and which both supports the entrepreneurial spirit and protects business owner investments and the health and safety of Angelinos. As you consider which rules apply best to different areas and communities, we ask that you take into consideration the unique needs of sports and entertainment districts, which were planned and designed to be 24-7 operations. The LA Sports and Entertainment District sees up to 10 million pedestrians per year, requiring adequate sidewalk access, as anticipated in the LASCD streetscape plan. We appreciate the opportunity as you develop the details of this plan to work with you on addressing these unique public safety concerns, which are outlined in a letter submitted to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen Rialto. Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Rialto, and I am the Interim Executive Director for the South Park Business Improvement District. The South Park bid wholly supports the de decriminalization of sidewalk vending violations 
And at the same time, we believe it is imperative that the framework outlines a realistic infrastructure of personnel to handle both the processing of permits and the adequate enforcement of regulations. Furthermore, we support a system that grants the community itself an active voice in determining whether or not to allow vending in their neighborhoods. Especially in the downtown area where commercial and residential zones are mixed, we must allow businesses and property owners a say on sidewalk vending in their area. Let's look to Boston and Portland as examples of cities with successful sidewalk vending programs. In these cities, vendors must obtain permission from the property and business owners where they vend. Thanks for your time. Thank you. After Sarah, we're looking for Nicole Shahinian, Erelindo Santiago, and Eileen Shapiro. Please come forward if you heard your name. And this is Sarah Walsh. Thanks, Councilman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Walsh, and I'm here today on behalf of the Motion Picture Association of America and our member companies to raise two concerns regarding the proposed vending policy. First, we thank Council Members Price and Buscaino for specifying that permits for filming will, will supersede any permits for vending. However, we have concerns about how these conflicts will be dealt with when they arise. Will LAPD or street services need to intercede? How quickly will the city be able to respond in the event that a vendor needs to be relocated? Secondly, as you are all aware, the sale of pirated films and television programs as well as counterfeit studio merchandise continues to occur throughout Los Angeles. We ask that the city's vending policy specifically prohibit vending of, commercial mer of counterfeit merchandise and provide for the immediate permanent revocation of any permit under which such product is being sold. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Good afternoon, Nicole Shahamian with the Hollywood Chamber. I want to echo Sarah's comments regarding counterfeit products and the immediate revocation of licenses as well. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Hollywood Boulevard. As you know, it's the most famous street in the world and is home to some of LA's most crowded sidewalks. With tens of thousands of visitors each day, Hollywood is a unique area of the city with very specific public safety concerns surrounding the use of its sidewalks and protection of the Walk of Fame. Hollywood Boulevard is already struggling with an overabundance of mobile food carts, CD vendors, street characters, <clears throat> and the legalization of sidewalk vending will undoubtedly bring more. The city, LAPD, and county departments that oversee vending do not have enough staff resources as it is to properly enforce the existing problems. We appreciate that your November 22nd letter, letter called out the need for special attention to Hollywood Boulevard, and we ask that you ensure that adequate protections are in place in the final legislation that's developed here. Lastly, I'd like to impose on you the importance of enforcement that's been brought to your attention. Thank you. My name is Eileen Shapiro. I'm representing Los Angeles City residents. We support legalizing sidewalk vending However, we are concerned about the traffic hazard from vendors' customers parking in red curb zones on narrow residential streets. Therefore, we request that sidewalk vending be prohibited in residential areas with narrow streets. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Before Erolino speaks, I do want to call up Debbie Welsh, Igor Corbator, and Reina Letty. Please come forward. Mr. Santiago. Mi nombre es Aureliano Santiago. Represento la Unión de Vendedores. Si no, un momento. If you have a translator. Okay, thank you. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Mi nombre es Aureliano Santiago. My name is Aureliano Santiago. Represento a la Unión Popular de Vendedores Ambulantes del Distrito 1. I represent the, the syndicate of uh, the street vendors of District 1. Señores, nosotros estamos pidiendo a que se legalice el, el vendedor ambulante. The gentlemen, we are asking you to legalize the street vendors. Pero así como estamos pidiendo y así como ustedes sugieren que se legalice Le pedimos que sea una cota justa. The same way we are asking for you to legalize the street vendors and the way you are asking for the street vendors to be legalized, we are asking for a fair interchange. Porque nuestro impuesto es necesario colaborar con este gobierno. Our tax is really necessary so we can collaborate with this government. 
y que tenga menos restricción. We want less restrictions. Porque si no caemos en lo mismo con las multas que nos va a poner la policía. Otherwise we're going to be in the same problem with the, all the fines that the police is going to impose us. Gracias, buenas tardes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Debbie Welsh. Please. please. Good afternoon. My name Hold I'm sorry. Please hold your applause ladies and gentlemen. We have so many cards here. Good Thank afternoon. You. My name is Debbie Welsh. I represent and owner Capital Foresight. We own 10 properties in downtown Los Angeles, including Arts District, Historic Core, and Fashion District. And we currently are incurring a lot of rising costs to, for assessments of the bid. Um, minimum wage is going up. Trash is now being regulated. The amount of, pro of costs that are, we are incurring is hurting our businesses. It's hurting our company. We have to raise rent. It's just a lot of, ri of rising um, and a very unrising um, income um, rate that we have. So just want to take that in consideration and thank you for your. Thank you, ma'am. Igor or Rena? Hi, Rena Letty with the Fashion District uh, bid, which covers 100 blocks and includes over 4,000 businesses. Many of our sidewalks are already so busy with pedestrians and vendors that we actually can't walk down them without stepping into the street. On weekends, we have anywhere from six to 10 food truck vendors plus three to four sidewalk vendors per block. So for us, the most important thing is to be able to um, create our own special vending district or opt out, whatever it is that the framework decides, but the one size fits all thing is very important to us, doesn't fit all. Um, and then lastly, we're very concerned and really push for a robust enforcement system within the framework guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. So next speaker is uh, Igor Korbator, no? And um, a speaker card was filled out, but no name said Street Vending Mercantile Center. Please come forward. And he's giving your name for the record, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Hirsch. I'm sorry about the card. Uh, I represent the Mercantile Center. We, uh, for two generations, manage properties in the Fashion District. Uh, uh, I want to start by saying we, we recognize and appreciate the, the concern of, of decriminalization of these activities and support that. Uh, our concern is the, is the uh, administration of the program you're suggesting and making sure that our tenants, who are all small businesses on the ground floor, who have been there for many, many years, are supported in their endeavors and are able to find an a equitable way to share the sidewalk as it is. It's a we encourage you to come visit. I'm sure you've, you've uh, seen a lot of the neighborhoods that this is going to impact in terms of the fashion district. I think it could have a, um, we look forward to having a positive impact. We have great concerns. We spend um, a great amount of efforts uh, keeping, the, keeping the district uh, inviting to both vendors and the public to come use the district. Thank you. Thank you. Next few speakers, Linda Becker, please come forward. Elisa Keller. Jonathan Herrera and John Howland, please come forward. Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Linda Becker. I am, my family has been property owners for over 80 years down here in the uh, downtown area. And we understand, for the record, I would have to say that I'm against the decriminalization for the simple fact that we have big concerns of being able to enforce what the framework has you have come up with. Um, we have no problem with having everybody have an equal right to be able to start a business and to, to grow it, but we also have to be concerned, as everyone has said, for the brick and mortar businesses. If, a, um, if we do limit it to two per block vendors, there should be a distance, just like with catering trucks. If you're selling food, you shouldn't be able to be within a certain distance of a food establishment or other types of businesses. Um, the health department, are they going to be the ones responsible for any violations if food? The catering trucks have to park at a, com a, at a uh, commissary, an approved commissary, to have health concerns um, addressed. This is also something that would be very Thank you. concerning for them. Thank you, ma'am. Elisa Keller? My name is Elisa Keller. I am a commercial property owner in downtown Los Angeles. My family have owned property for 55 years. 
Um, I am asking the council to not allow sidewalk bending. While I am in favor of decriminalizing sidewalk bending, I feel that it is uh, detrimental to our area. We have tenants who are paying rent and paying their sales tax, business taxes, licensing fees. I feel it is not fair to them nor to the property owners who are paying property taxes and paying additional property taxes to the fashion district bid in my case. Um, to maintain the values of our property, we invest a lot of our personal funds into our properties and we feel that it would not be enhancing the area, it would actually be hurting the area. And we ask that the council please enforce the codes and laws that exist and find a better way to, you know, allow people who are trying to bend um, to do that. And um, I, I hope that you take our concerns into consideration and allow for an opt-in for property owners. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Jonathan Herrera with VICA, the Valley Industry and Commerce Association. VICA applauds the hard work that has been invested in developing a comprehensive sidewalk fending framework. Provisions such as limiting vendors per block, um, requiring permission from adjacent property and business owners, and ensuring vendors pay their fair share in taxes are all great components to this policy. To strengthen these concerns, FICA recommends implementing a cap on vending permits issued to feasibly limit the number of vendors per block and to ensure city staff is not overburdened. It is important the city allocate additional staff to oversee the regulation and enforcement of sidewalk vending so vendors who do follow the rules are not competing with those who do not. The proposed special vending districts are unclear and VICA remains concerned as to how these districts will impact businesses and neighborhoods. The policy should be clear that under no circumstance should the consent of an adjacent property owner or business be overruled. If 20% of property owners or businesses in a district decide to reduce eliminate or eliminate vending, they should be do so without uh, having to prove concerns of health, safety, or welfare. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. John, before you speak, I do want to call up uh, Janet Favela, Deborah Hyman, and Ophelia Ruiz. Please come forward. John Hallen. Good afternoon, I'm John Howland, and I'm here on behalf of the Central City Association. We represent 450 businesses across Los Angeles and believe the City Council should establish a sidewalk vending program. Let me start by saying that CCA supports decriminalizing sidewalk vending. We greatly appreciate the framework that has been put forward by the chairs, Buscaino and Bryce. It includes many of the items that we have advocated for and believe are important, including property or business owner consent, stationary vending, and a limit of two vendors per block. And we believe that a one-size-fits-all approach for a city as diverse as Los Angeles will not work. CCA believes we still need details on a sustainable enforcement plan in order to make this program successful. We ask that you request additional information, including the necessary budget for effective enforcement. And we request that you ask for detailed information on how the proposed special vending districts will work. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Janet Favela. I'm here as an organizer and representation of the National Day Laborer Organizing Network. We're here to support tens of, tens of thousands of street vendors and the LA Street Vendor Campaign. We believe that it is important um, to be here because the last few months our communities have woken up to the existing and new threats against their very existence in this country. To be considered criminal and deportable only for dignified efforts towards economic survival is outrageous and backwards. Street vendors in LA have been fighting for legalization and justice. They deserve it. They deserve to live and work without fear. Today we're glad to see um, efforts towards real steps towards legalization. Um, and we need more than symbolic gestures. I want to highlight that we want to make sure that legalization that happens in Los Angeles does not include misdemeanors. We need to decriminalize street vending. I also hear the term bad actors when we're talking here, and I want to um, caution against this language. Instead, we should be talking about supporting the folks that will not be able to enter the formal vending pro program immediately. Let's consider amnesty on the tickets and support systems such as outreach and education to support folks. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Hyman. Hello, my name is Deborah Hyman. I am a street vendor in Lamert Park and Echo Park. I am here to, in support of legalizing street vendors. First, I want to ask all the vendors and supporters to please stand. Quick, 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 quick. They are not criminals. 
They're honest people trying to make a living. First, the proposal to vendors, per, two vendors per block would not work everywhere. Vendors like to cluster for many reasons, including safety and economic support. Second, hours of operation needs to be more flexible. Some of us vend late at night when party goers need a meal to sober up, or early in the morning when people are on their way to work or school. Lastly, I understand that this policy proposal is for a city sidewalk, but we need to make sure parks are not left behind. I urge the city council to also move along a policy for vending in the parks because many park vendors are also being criminalized for trying to make a living. The campaign to legalize street vending will continue to fight for the rights of all street and park Thank vendors. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Ophelia. Um, one minute. One minute. Hold on. Um, I'd that? like to invite Umberto Uali. Sonia Huerta and Greg Kettles, please come forward. Again, Umberto Uali, um, Sonia Huerta, and Greg Kettles. Okay, this is Ophelia Ruiz. Can we get two minutes for interpretation? Yes. If you Buenas need interpretation. I can, I can. Okay, fantastic. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ophelia Ruiz. Soy vendedora ambulante de MacArthur Park. Good afternoon. My name is Ophelia Ruiz. I'm a, a street vendor in MacArthur Park. A mí me preocupa que el programa para, la legal, para legalizar la venta ambulante tiene un horario de 7 a.m. a 10 p.m. I'm worried that the proposal to legalize your vending has operational hours from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Y que solo quieren dos vendedores por cuadra. And that you only want two vendors per block. A mí me preocupa porque somos muchos vendedores y, y pocos se beneficiarán. I'm worried because there's a lot of vendors and few folks will benefit from this. Aproximadamente hay 30 vendedores en mi cuadra y solo hay dos permisos. There's approximately 30 vendors on the block where I vend and you're saying only two permits. Yo pienso que ustedes no están considerando las necesidades de nosotros. I think that you are not considering our needs. Y el horario que proponen limita a mis compañeros que vendan de madrugada. Que ven and the time you're proposing limits my other street vendors to sell early in the morning. Por eso me gustaría y le sugiero que a, no haya límite de horario y que tampoco haya límite de cuántos vendedores. And that's why I'm suggesting and I'm asking for there not to be a limit on the hours or the amount of vendors. Puedan trabajar en una cuadra. The amount of vendors that work on a block. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Humberto. Uh, buenas tardes con todos ustedes, señores. Uh, mi nombre es Humberto Yauli y soy vendedor en el sur centro de Los Ángeles. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Humberto Yari and I'm a vendor in South Central. Me parece muy poco dos vendedores por cuadra, ya que propongo que se haga más flexible en el número de vendedores para acalar la, la ley. I think it's too few, two vendors per block, and I ask that you are more flexible with the number of vendors per block. En el área de donde yo vendo hay muchos vendedores ambulantes que no alcanzarían vender sus productos de venta. In the area where I vend, there's a lot of vendors who would be left out from being able to vend their products. Solo dos permisos cambiaría la economía en prejuicio de los vendedores, ya que muchas familias dependen de la venta ambulatoria. Only two per block would change the economy for a lot of vendors against vendors and a lot of vendors uh, rely on vending to support their families. Por eso les pido que hagan más flexibilidad en los números de vendedores por cuadra. That's why I'm asking for there to be more flexibility on the number of vendors per block. Muchas gracias en nombre de todos los compañeros. Thank you on behalf of all of the vendors. Thank you. Is uh, Miss Huerta? No. Santa? Santa Huerta? Okay, Mr. Kettles. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Greg Kettles with the LA Street Vending Campaign. If I approach the city of Los Angeles and ask for permission to open a brick and mortar business, the city would not say, wait a second, there are already two more businesses on that street. I'm sorry, you can't open your brick and mortar business there, too. The city 
embraces business generally, it should be embracing all sorts of business enterprises, including street vending. They should be treated the exact same way. We're asking for a level playing field. I grant that there are some concerns about congestion. Those should be addressed with common sense rules about keeping sidewalk space open for the passage of pedestrians and access to doorways and, side, and sidewalks. Similarly, if I were to ask permission to open up a business in Los Angeles, the city would not tell me, ask permission first of that neighboring business enterprise. It is unfair to put any business owner at the mercy of another business, competitive or not. The playing field should be level for vendors, especially because they've been unfairly stigmatized. It's not fair to have them ask permission from a property owner who may be, Thank uh, you. treat them unfairly. Thank you. Santa Huerta. Hold on, um, Ms. Huerta, hold on. If we can bring up, um, hold on. Cynthia Anderson Barker, uh, Daphne Gonzalez, Jesus Gonzalez Salcedo, Doug Smith, please come forward if you heard your name. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Santa Huerta. Yo vengo del, del distrito del Fashion Center. Good Yo soy vendedora de juguetes y ropa en general. Yo no estoy de acuerdo con... Good afternoon. My name is Santa, and I vend in the Fashion District. I'm a vendor of toys and other merchandise. Uh, no estoy de acuerdo con, con los dos vendedores que están proponiendo porque para nosotros en realidad la cuadra donde yo vendo está bastante amplia y los vendedores sería muy peligroso porque hay gente um, que vende drogas, que, que son malhechores de ahí de la calle y no nos podríamos ayudar unos a los otros. I'm not, I'm not, I don't agree with two vendors per block because the street where I vend is very long and wide. There's plenty of space and it wouldn't be safe for only to be two vendors because there's other things going on, uh, drug dealers or other folks that um, could endanger us. So that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of vendors to keep us safe. Para mí sería um, conveniente que nos dejaran mucho más vendedores porque de esa manera se generaría más dinero y también nos apoyaríamos unos a los otros para poder ir al baño o X cosas, ¿no? It would be more convenient for me, if, uh, it would be allowed for there to be more vendors because that way we can uh, support each other on the block, for example, when one of us needs to use the restroom, the other one takes care of our merchandise. Por favor, me gustaría que tuvieran esa consideración. Yo como ambulante he sacado a mis dos hijos de ser ambulante y están en la universidad y no vivo del gobierno y pago mi, mis impuestos igual que todo. And I would Gracias. ask you to take that into consideration. As a street vendor, I've been able to uh, pay for my children's education. They're both in universities and I'm um, not dependent on the government and uh, I would ask that of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Cynthia Anderson Park Barker. Thank you so much first for your hard work on the ordinance. My name is Cynthia Anderson Barker. I'm a civil rights attorney and for the past three and a half years, the Lawyers Guild has been running a free legal clinic for street vendors who are prosecuted not just for misdemeanors, but for infractions that can turn into misdemeanors when vendors don't appear in court. So infractions are a problem. So what we've seen is the criminalization of street vending. It's a waste of judicial and law enforcement resources. And the ordinance makes a good effort at addressing this issue. But the remaining, one remaining concern is the requirement for vendors to obtain the permission of a business owner to sell in front of the establishment. So this is fraught with legal and political problems and practical problems. The proposed policy would clearly exceed the city's police powers. There's no public purpose for giving brick and mortar businesses veto power over whether a vendor can sell. Finally, I want to let you know that brick and mortar businesses are now charging vendors to post their goods on the walls of the stores. Thank you. And that's an impediment. Thank too. you. Thank you. Daf Daphne Gonzalez. Good afternoon, my name is Daphne Gonzalez and I am a sophomore at Alliance Matek High School and a constituent of Councilman Price's District 9. Um, I am pleased to say that my school worked alongside two other schools in this report in which we covered the views of Los Angeles urban students and families on legalizing sidewalk vending in Los Angeles. Um, if you look throughout the data, we 
uh, surveyed 738 students and 121 parents from districts 1, 8, 9, 10, 13, and 14. 83.9% of students supported legalization, as well as 67% of parents supported it. Um, of course, there were some concerns, uh, which included safety, health, um, and the taxes. But I feel like the legalization of street vending would obviously make sure that these people are safe from deportation, safe from losing the food that they have to make and the merchandise that they have to sell just to make a living, and safe from losing what might be their only means of making enough money to even eat. Street vending has become a part of my culture and my community, and the last thing that I want is for that to be jeopardized. Thank you for your time. Daphne. Um... Really, uh, we are all so proud of you at such a young age advocating for what you believe in. Um, um, for the record, we do have a copy of your report. I do want to recognize all of the authors, Daphne, Alexander, Sandoval, Jesus Gonzalez, Alyssa Kwan, Damien Davia, and Jordi Roland. Um, very comprehensive. Thank you so much for your hard work. And um, you have all inspired us, inspired this entire city. Uh, for young folks like yourself who are encouraged, who are motivated, and who are seeking change. So congratulations to you. Thank, Thank you, Daphne. You. Jesus Gonzalez. Oh. So, um, hold on, hold on, sir. Yeah, I, I just want to also uh, just recognize the JSA. Uh, they have just done, a, done an extraordinary job working with young people, encouraging them to be involved uh, and uh, a part of the, uh, the, the, the civic fabric of our community at an early age. So I appreciate uh, uh, their report on street vending. It's been very instructive as we work out our rules and regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Another author on this report that's before us here, uh, that's on our desk, rather, is uh, Jesus Gonzalez. Thank you. Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Um, I stand here today on behalf of tens of thousands of urban students and on behalf of street vendors. You've already heard the numbers, you've heard the statistics, but now let's hear the voice behind street vendors. I myself, I grew up as a street vendor. I grew up selling outside um, fairs with a stick of cotton candy. And the truth is, as I grew older, my jovial moments quickly succumbed to the brutal realities of life. As I've grown older, I've become aware of the injustices and inhumane treatment that street vendors endure. We're approached as criminals, as people that are filthy, uneducated. But that's not true, and I'm here to extinguish this notion. And, and I'm here to expound on the fact that this proposal, it's a stepping stone in initially in extinguishing that notion. And I firmly believe that if legislation or this proposal should pass, it should not impede it impede the progression of my people. It should not restrict them. It should, in fact, empower them to fulfill the very dream that we have all came here to fulfill, the American dream. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. I think between the, the both of you, Jesus and Daphne, you will be sitting up here one of these days. Um, Mr. Smith, Doug Smith, and Doug, if before you... Um, Begin. I do want to call up Gilbert Saucedo, Gilbert Saucedo, um, Caridad Vasquez, Gonzalo Solis. Please come forward, Mr. Smith. Good Thank afternoon. You. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Smith. I'm an attorney at Public Council. We strongly support the plan to immediately decriminalize street vending. However, this requires some alignment across multiple policies. So we'd like to offer three additional steps that we hope the committee will consider in order to fully achieve this important goal. First, vendors are routinely cited under multiple code sections. So in addition to section 42, the ordinance should clarify that section 6344 and section 80.73 will also not include criminal sanctions. Second, the ACE program needs technical amendments in order to be a viable non-criminal enforcement program. In our comment letter, we suggest specific amendments to clarify that defendants receiving an ACE ticket will not subsequently face misdemeanor prosecution for the same citation. Third, we urge the council to collaborate with the city attorney to create an amnesty program for pending and prior street vending convictions and associated criminal justice debt. With these actions, with these additions, the city will better protect immigrant entrepreneurs and reinforce our commitment to inclusion, opportunity, and justice. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
I'm Gilbert Salcedo. I'm an attorney and member of the National Lawyers Guild. And I want to thank uh, Council Members uh, Buscaino and Price for reviving this ordinance and hopefully it will be reaching the council and being enacted into law soon. Uh, one of the things that I would like uh, to add to the ordinance, if possible, is to provide an amnesty for those uh, vendors who have tic unpaid tickets. Uh, the idea behind this ordinance is, is to decriminalize street vending. And if this is not added to it, there are many street vendors who have tickets they haven't been able to pay because they live in a subsistence level. Those tickets will become our, or, or our uh, arrest warrants and could become misdemeanors that will affect their, their immigration status. And I think that's one of the main purposes in moving this, this forward quickly. So I would urge you to add a, a provision to create amnesty for unpaid tickets, past tickets for, for um, vendors who have them. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Caridad Vasquez. Uh, mi nombre es Caridad Vasquez. Vengo de Boyo Heights y soy vendedora ambulante. My name is Caridad Vasquez. I'm coming from Boyo Heights and I'm a street vendor. Señores, este, concejales, simplemente vengo a decirles que traigo un sentimiento tan grande porque eh, como vendedora, el sábado a una de mis compañeras les quitaron sus cosas. I'm here to tell you that I come with a great sentiment because on Saturday, one of my uh, one of the street vendors that I know, they took away her stuff. Y no es justo que nosotros, las vendedoras, salgamos padres de comer a nuestros hijos, lleguen y nos quiten nuestras cosas. And it's not just that we're out there trying to make a living for our children and then that our things are taken away. Estamos en tiempo de Navidad. It's Christmas time. ¿Qué hacemos si no vendemos? What do we do if we can't sell? ¿Qué les vamos a dar a nuestros hijos? What are we going to give our children? ¿Qué Navidad les vamos a dar? What type of Christmas are we going to give them? Y no nomás este año, todos los años hemos sufrido en este tiempo. And not just this time, but every year we suffer around this time. Porque llegan y nos quitan todo. Because they get there and they take away our stuff. Y otro día empezar. And we have to start all over again. Y es muy importante que a ustedes les llegue que todos los que vendemos en la calle también tenemos necesidad y tenemos que dar regalos a nuestros hijos. And it's important for you to know that all of us who stand on the streets also have needs and we have to give our kids toys or gifts. El corazón Touch en your estos heart meses. in these months. Que haya paz. For there to be peace. Para todos nosotros. For all of us. Comercios grandes, pequeños. Small businesses, big business. Aquí unirnos a una legalización. We have to unite for legalization. Para seguir adelante como cualquier empresario. To continue going like any business. Porque también nosotros pagamos taxes. Because we also pay taxes. Así como nos ven. Just the way you look at us, we also pay taxes. Nos quitan las cosas. They take away our stuff. Y de todos modos pagamos taxes. And we still pay taxes. Entonces es muy importante que lleguemos ya a este término, que lleguemos a legalizar nuestra venta. It's important that Gracias. we get there, that we legalize our, our vending Thank now. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Gonzalo. Gonzalo Solis. No? Gonzalo Solis, no? Um, Coach Shield Dominguez. Mr. Dominguez. Alfonso Garcia. No? Isabel Rodriguez, followed by Eric Aris. Eric, come forward. Annette Kim, please come forward. Karelia Rojas, please come forward. So we have Isabel Rodriguez first? Yes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Isabel Rodriguez, soy madre soltera. Soy vendedora ambulante y vendo en parques y aceras. Hello, my name is Isabel Rodriguez. I'm a single mother. I'm a street vendor and I sell in parks and sidewalks. Señores concejales, los exhorto a que el día de hoy salgamos de aquí con unas recomendaciones justas. As council members, I ask you that we leave today with recommend, just recommendations. Su enforzamiento, ya que ustedes tienen el poder. Just, just recommendations about enforcement, given that you have the power. Y moralmente, de, pe, de pedir un alto a la criminaliza, criminalización. And a, moral, and a moral right to ask for a stop to criminalization. Yo he sido humillada, esposada. Me subieron a una patrulla como una criminal. I've been humiliated, I've been arrested, I've been put in a, the back of a cop car like a criminal. 
Y lo más triste es ver la cara, el rostro de mi hijo llorando y la preocupación de estar dentro de la patrulla. The saddest part was seeing my son's face crying when he saw me in the back of the cop car. Y haberlo subido también a él. And then also putting him in the cop car. Señores, mi único delito es ser vendedor ambulante. My only crime is being a street vendor. Honesta. An honest street vendor. Tener que enseñarle a mi hijo. Thank you. A trabajar Te honradamente. Teaching my son to work. Thank you. Gracias. Eric Aris. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Eric Aras. I'm with the Los Angeles Community Action Network. Uh, first, we would like to join others here to support the general framework for this moving forward. Uh, I also support, and we also support, the uh, general points of this LA Street Vendor campaign. However, I do want to bring up a couple points related to these special vending districts. Um, with a city as large as LA, we understand that uh, there might be needs for uh, certain local circumstances, but we really urge you all about a few critical provisions to make sure that this is a workable and equitable system. First, we have to make sure that any special vending districts um, aren't exclusionary, that it shouldn't result in a backdoor opt-out to the citywide program. How do we do this? We must limit the overall size of these special vending districts. Again, if they're addressing specific things, that's fine. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't opt out for entire communities. Vendors should also be involved in establishing these vending districts, including a process for allowing vendors to initiate one themselves. Lastly, they should be required to be approved by the full city council. This is a citywide policy we're supporting, so anything requiring a special vending district should be um, approved by full city council and based on the findings of public health, safety, and welfare of those communities. Thank, Thank you. you. Annette Kim, please. Hello, my name is Annette Kim. I'm a professor at USC's Price School of Public Policy, and I've been researching about sidewalks and vending here in the U.S. and around the world, published a book about it last year, and held a conference about street vending at USC last year, bringing together experts from around the country and the world. And we published our papers at the U.S. Department of HUD and Urban Development's public journal, Cityscape, which we can be used as a reference. I'd like to offer two lessons. First, I applaud you for moving towards legalizing vending. Around the world, cities have been moving in this direction, recognizing that vending is legitimate and necessary way to make a living and can contribute to a city's vitality. It's also a reality, given the recent wave of immigration in cities around the world, the real question is how to manage it. So regulations need to be space-based and flexible enough to fit different kinds of streets and sidewalks in the city and different kinds of vending. And so I, uh, Propose alternative framework to have ADA compliance and clearance requirements make sense. Thank you. Thank you. So before I bring up Carelia Rojas, please, um, if you hear your name, come forward. Uh, Ru Ruby Rezendis, Rabbi Jonathan Klein, Claire Fox, Merced Sanchez. Please come forward. Ms. Rojas, okay. welcome. Buenas tardes, señores del concilio. Mi nombre es Carelia Rojas. Soy vendedora ambulante del distrito de Fashion. Uh, Good afternoon, council members. My name is Carelia Rojas. I'm a street vendor in the Fashion District. Mi recomendación para el programa de la venta ambulante que los ambulantes también tengan acceso a crear sus distritos. My recommendation to the legalized street vending uh, proposal is that street vendors should also have access to creating their own districts. Y no estoy de acuerdo que los distritos se usen solo para excluir a los vendedores. And I'm not in agreement that special districts will be used just to exclude street vendors. En la District Fashion ya somos un distrito. Los vendedores somos promovedores de una gran economía. In the Fashion District, we are already a district, and street vendors are the ones who promote a great economy. A través de la región, clientes vienen a comprar nuestra mercancía de los vendedores. Si no estuviéramos aquí, no se movería la economía de los District Fashion. Throughout re the whole entire region, clients come here to buy merchandise from us, the street vendors. If there weren't street vendors here, the economy wouldn't move like it does in the Fashion District. 
donde se siente el calor de las diferentes culturas y es por eso que se debería ampliar las horas de labor porque ahí empezamos a las 3 de la mañana. In the fashion district you can feel the, feel the warmth from the different cultures and because of that you also need to extend the hours of operation to at least 3 in the morning. Por eso pido al comité del concilio que incluyan a los vendedores a formar sus propios distritos especiales. That's why I'm asking the council members to include the street vendors in the process of creating special districts. Ya que no surge la legalización de la venta ambulante y no tener problemas con las autoridades. And it's urgent for us to have legalization and not continue to have problems with the law. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, okay, Ruby. Your name, please. Hi, uh, my name is Ruby Resendiz. Thank you, Ruby. I am a street vendor in Piñata District. Uh, Piñata District is a district in which street vendors and businesses get together to fill the block with different types of food and merchandise to attract clients. I am here to try and support the idea that a group of vendors should be able to create their own special district. This point is very important for me and the vendors of my district because if you only allow two vendors per block, then it would affect us personally. Since we all set up our booths side by side and we are used to doing it this way and so are our clients. If for any reason we aren't unable to create our own special district, then this would affect the Piñata district since it would have to separate and basically break apart and it will affect the vendors and businesses economically. For this reason, I ask that this committee should be in favor of vendors being able to create their own special districts. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi Klein. Hi, everybody. Rabbi Jonathan Klein with CLU, Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice. And um, I know this body wants to decriminalize, and I and we are grateful for that. But we can't do that and simultaneously consider vending a nuisance. Creating special districts or requiring schools to sign off or limiting vendors to two per block or setting very restrictive hours, this or re requiring brick and mortar to sign off only with street vending but not with other brick and mortar nearby, this is saying we only tolerate you and you are lesser, not you are part and parcel of our community. The emphasis on enforcement contradicts the spirit of your earnest desire to decriminalize. These are our families, our community members. As the grandchild of street peddlers myself, I'm grateful for a nation that opened its doors and ultimately allowed me and my family to thrive. And I hope that you will remember that the measure of our society is its will to protect its most vulnerable. Now more than ever, it's time to establish good policies. Thank you. Thank you. Claire? Hi, good afternoon. Claire Fox, LA Food Policy Council. Council members, on January 20th, our world changes significantly. The incoming presidential administration has promised to ramp up efforts to deport undocumented members of our community, and their inflammatory rhetoric has already led to a spike in hate crimes. We know that in light of changing political landscapes, cities will need to provide every protection and every opportunity to support low-income communities, immigrants, and small business entrepreneurs. The proposal put forward by the committee chairs is a solid attempt to do what the city has never been able to do, provide a concrete pathway forward to embrace street vending as a critical part of our city, our economy, and our cultural life. Taking to heart the feedback today about the arbitrary number of two vendors per block and the requirement for adjacent businesses to grant permission, we urge you to act expeditiously today to recommend an ordinance and to build a foundation of a citywide program that can serve as a buffer for some of our city's most vulnerable residents in light of an uncertain future. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I'm looking for Merced Sanchez. Merced Sanchez. No? Um, Guerrelamina Gonzalez, Jay Weitzer, Victor Naro, Joseph Marian, come forward. This Miss Gonzalez? Okay, please come forward. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Guillermina González, yo vendo en, el, en la calle 4 y Soto y en diferentes eventos. Mi venta es arte y 
y comida a veces. Good afternoon, my name is Yermina Gonzalez. I sell on 4th Street in Bull Heights and other areas, and I sell my art and food. Es bien importante que tome la decisión, más en estos momentos, de que la economía global está mal. It is very important for you to make this decision, especially in this moment where our global economy is not doing well. Queremos una legalización justa e inclusiva. We want a just legalization that's inclusive. Somos una gran familia que necesitamos el apoyo también de ustedes. We are a big family and we also need your support. Nosotros no somos criminales. We are not criminals. Somos una comunidad necesitada de una oportunidad de una legalización. We're a community that needs a legalization. Vamos a luchar hasta el final. We're going to fight till the end. No es justo que los que tienen más dinero nos lleven ventaja a los que somos menos afortunados. It's not fair that those who have more money uh, are doing better than us who, are, who don't have as much money. Queremos una legalización ahora. We want a legalization now. Y que sea inclusiva y justa. And that's inclusive and just. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Jay Weitzer, come forward. Jay Weitzler, appearing for the Sherman Oaks uh, Homeowners Association. We are a residential organization, uh, and I, I can't think of anything worse than to criminalize the kind of behavior that the street vendors have been engaged in. Uh, the people that have stood up here and said they've been arrested, that's ridiculous. That should never happen. We welcome in our community the diversity that's going to happen when we do have some street vendors, but nothing is without consequence. So we also recognize that there are budgetary considerations. I don't know if, there, if there's a violation of any of the regula regulations. There's going to have to be a means to address that. There's going to have to be a budget to cover the uh, street cleaning, street sweeping. Um, the street vendors may be responsible for their area, but as clean and well-meaning as they may be, I hate to say it, but some of my city dwellers don't share that as, as much. And they're, our consequences to selling food on the city streets, not from them, but by the, from the people who consume it. So is the shopkeeper supposed to take care of that? So Thank you. just wish to point out to, to take care of the budgetary aspect. Thank you for your comments. Victor Naro, followed by Joseph Marian. Marian? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Victor Naro from the UCLA Labor Center. I co-taught a law school class at UCLA Law School last semester, a, a seminar on public interest law. And seven of my students uh, produce this great research on the topics that you're dealing with today relating to street vendors. They're taking exams today, so I promised them that I would submit this uh, for public record. But the highlights of their reports focus on criminalization. I think uh, as a member of the National Lawyers Guild, I've seen the ill effects and the harm caused by misdemeanors, past tickets. Uh, the system that exists today is un unworkable for street vendors. We've got to come up with a way to get rid of misdemeanors and infractions and to come out with an amnesty program to pardon vendors for past tickets and come out with something that's going to make sense. Otherwise, we're going to have the same kind of exploitation of street vendors. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph? Yes. Joseph Mario with the Hollywood Property Owners Alliance. Uh, we're a nonprofit that represents 500 businesses and property owners in the Hollywood area. First of all, let me be very clear about what we are not for. We are definitely against the criminalization of vending. But our concern is with um, the tremendous costs that we spend as a district and organization that we want to maintain the marketing district. And it's important to allow businesses and property owners the, that choose to opt out the ability to do so. The other is the importance of enforcement. Um, out of safety for both those in our district and the vendors themselves, we feel that a regulation or an ordinance that's passed without teeth is no good to anybody. And uh, as a former law enforcement officer, I know you can appreciate enforcement and when it's done properly. So we ask that the committee and the council both strongly consider proper enforcement efforts with whatever is passed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Cherry Rub Rubino, followed by George Francisco. Please come forward. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank I live you. in the South Park area of downtown which is mixed with high-rise residential units and commercial businesses. The property values and therefore property taxes are determined by curb appeal, so it's critical that homeowners have a say in determining whether and which vendors they want on their block. It's important that if community determines that the street vending becomes a nuisance, 
or has unintended consequences, there be a clear procedure to stop the practice in our immediate neighborhood. Limiting the language needed to petition for vending changes to public health, safety, and welfare concerns is unnecessarily restrictive. It is also important the residents know who to contact and that someone will be available beyond 9 to 5 to be sure that there is enforcement of the existing laws during the hours that street vending is happening. Lastly, for the protection of the consumer, health department grades should be clearly posted on each food cart, just as they are in restaurants, along with the number to call or where to email for violation complaints. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Your name, please. Hi, I'm George, George Francisco. Thank you. I'm the Vice President of the Venice Neighborhood Council. I'm a board member of uh, Pacific Division's uh, Police Advisory Board, uh, but I'm here today because I'm also the President of the Venice Chamber of Commerce. I'm here to represent 379 small businesses. As I've said in these chambers before, if you take away Google, Snapchat, and Whole Foods, my membership consists of, of businesses that have between 1 and 15 members. Um, I applaud you for your efforts to create revenue for the city at a time when it's well necessary. Uh, I also applaud you for giving the good people who work very hard an opportunity to not be criminals just for having uh, a job and for supporting their families. Um, I would caution you uh, in terms of how you apply this proposed legislation to make it as granular as possible. I don't know how many of you come down to Venice, but I welcome all of you. I welcome the council members. Um, it's very unique. My members of our Chamber of Commerce have an incredibly high rental. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And your name, please. My name is... Mi nombre es Merced Sanchez. Merced, okay. I have your card here. Okay, welcome. Soy vendedor ambulante en el distrito de La Piñata. En esta área, los vendedores... Sí, estamos de acuerdo en que se establezcan distritos especiales. Hello, my name is Merced Sanchez. I am a street vendor in the uh, Piñata district, and in this area, we are um, we do agree with special districts for vendors. Que nos den el derecho a vendedores ambulantes a crear nuestros propios distritos. For to give us the street vendors the right to also create our own special districts. Ya que al solo dejar dos vendedores por bloque, un 99% se quedaría fuera de esta legalización. Because of the proposal to only have two vendors per block, 99% of the vendors would not benefit from this legalization. Y que por muchos años hemos estado ahí realizando nuestra venta. Es nuestro centro de trabajo. And for many years we've been vending in this area. This is our center of work. Quiero hacer de su conocimiento que en esta área somos víctimas de los dueños de negocios. I want to let you know that in this area we are victims of the small business owners. Que nos rentan las banquetas cobrando entre 60 dólares por un fin de semana y 1,800 mensuales. Who charge rent to street vendors for setting up on the sidewalks, sometimes $60 for the weekend or up to $1,800 per month. Según el espacio que ocupemos, y si no aceptas pagarles esta, sacan ellos su mercancía a la banqueta para no dejarte vender. Depending on the space that you're setting up, and if you don't agree to pay them, then they bring out their merchandise onto the street so that you don't have space to set up. Este abuso no puede continuar. This abuse cannot continue. Señores concejales, espero Thank you. sean escuchadas nuestras peticiones. Con Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if I can have your attention, I, I have about um, 13 more cards. We have one member on the committee that needs to, has a hard out at 3.30, needs to leave, and I don't want to break a quorum. And based on what I've heard earlier, it seems like we're going to advance this item um, to full council with the policy recommendation. So. Um, I'd ask for those who are in support that you uh, consider foregoing your, your card um, and your time, but I, I'll leave that up to you. But just know that those who are in support moving forward, seems like we're going to have uh, the support here in this committee 
to advance the policy to council. So if you really need to speak, then you are afforded to speak, but please, I don't want to lose the quorum here. Um, you're still more than welcome to speak. Uh, Don Carsa, is, is he here? You want to speak? Okay. Uh, Stephanie Campbell? Stephanie, you still want to speak? How about Martha Cox? You still want to speak, Martha? Okay, okay. It only take me five seconds. Come forward. And job? I'm going to go ahead and go while you're going, I guess. I'm, uh, okay, go ahead. It only take me, look, I'm a disabled veteran, and rent is high. So, as a matter of fact, I actually do go now and then to MacArthur Park and sell items, maybe some electronics or something I bought in the past or something somebody gave me so that way I can help with my rent now and then. So, I'm, I'm for legalizing vending, but like, let's, let, like these other people are saying, listen to what they have to say about, you know, all the restrictions. Other than that... Get this move forward. Thank you. Stephanie Campbell. Uh, hello, my name is Stephanie Campbell. I'm on the president of the Kendall Neighborhood Council, but I'm speaking as an individual. I won't take up a lot of time. Hello, Councilman Price. Uh, just, uh, just to say that I hope that the committee really looks at the piece that has to deal with uh, the county and street services. Uh, just, just as an antidote, um, where it's been my experience that in order for us to get services from street services, it's, it's very, very difficult. And so to put another burden on them is something that I think that the committee really, really needs to look at. Thank you. Thank you. Martha? Yes, Good Martha Cox, native in Boma. I just wanted to be really brief. First, um, we wanted to get on record that we do um, support the movement to end misdemeanors um, for sidewalk. Um, violations. I think it's really important that we move away from criminality. The other thing really has more to do with uh, property owners' right to have a say. Obviously, we think that's important um, beyond whether it's the retail company. We think building owners should have that say in some, either a special district or um, just citywide. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, others are, who are in support, if you'd like to forego your time, uh, please consider. If not, please come up. And job, Jackie Rain Ryan. Uh, Christopher Perry, Jr., uh, Nina Loyal, Ronnie Veliz. Nina, you're okay? Okay. Greetings, council members and uh, concerned citizens. Although I Your name, sir, I'm sorry. Oh, Christopher Perry. Thank you, I have you. Thank you. Although I represent several neighborhood councils uh, in the city of Los Angeles as a city budget advocate, uh, these are my personal opinions and concerns. I think the creation of a street vendors parking permit system will provide an impetus to create revenue. A pool of funds may even be used to counter rev rather than create pollution, thereby contributing to safer streets. In my neighborhood, pollution is a serious matter causing possible health issues, increased dumping, and nuisance concerns. The only rational way to resolve these problems will be to will be destruction of a legalized sidewalk vending system that is self-supporting and promotes entrepreneurship. For me personally, this is a buzzy issue rather than a criminal issue. The city of Los Angeles is foregoing potential revenue by legalizing, by, by, by not legalizing sidewalk vending. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Nina Royal on behalf of the Land Use Committee of the Sunland Tahunga Neighborhood Council. We do support the motion with uh, uh, some exceptions. We are hoping that there will be enforcement, which there never is for any of the street vendors. There never has been. Since 30 years that I've been in that community, the laws are not enforced. We need to put, there is no money in the budget to do this, and only if there is money, and if our neighborhood can select where the vendors can be, do we support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Your name, sir? Ronnie? Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Ronnie Belize, and I'm the co-founder and director of Somos Familia Valle. We're a San Fernando Valley grassroots movement representing LGBTQ people, many who are people of color, and millennials who are undocumented immigrants. Here to support the decriminalization of street vending, many of our first-generation LGBTQ mentors in our movement are in college because of the hard work, resilience, and pride that we find in our parents' street vending. We thank you for moving this ordinance forward. At the same time, we urge you to reflect and support no limits on street vending hours. And if this ordinance is to be passed, please make it stronger with a recommendation to support a pardon of tickets for everyone who's been previously criminalized for street vending. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so with that, we have three who've marked um, opposition of the policy recommendation. Gary Agas, Mike Ogara, Lizardo Rivera. Please come forward. Be our final three speakers, or two speakers. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Gary Agus. I'm with the uh, past president of the Sun Valley Area Neighborhood Council. I'm speaking for myself. Uh, I am against the uh, proposal as, uh, as submitted. Uh, it needs to have some amendments, uh, so, some of which are need sanitation sinks for hand washing gloves, hair nets, toilets in proximity uh, that the vendor has permission to use from the owner or tenant within 100 feet. Need regional commissaries to prepare food for vendors to purchase under the daily supervision of Department of Health. Need butchering facilities have on-site inspectors. All food must be dated and stamped for sale. It's imperative that an effective enforcement structure be put in place by this ordinance. Without it, any regulation is useless. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Mike O'Gara. I've lived in Sun Valley for 43 years. <clears throat> the Los Angeles City Sidewalk Vending Ordinance should not be the vehicle to write legislation affecting immigration status. This ordinance should not in any way address the immigration status of any of the permit applicants. Don't rush to pass a poorly worded sidewalk vending ordinance that doesn't deal with or ignores a large number of very important health and safety issues by fear-mongering using an immigration issue. This all needs to be done as a test case. Those communities that have demonstrated that their stakeholders and businesses want and support the issuing of licenses to street vendors within their boundaries should be allowed to have street vendors. But only if we agree that the areas that are recommended that all safeguards have been taken, such as an enforcement agent and staff trained and provided with sufficient resources, both manpower and equipment, and a permitting agency has been built with all necessary permits and license requirements. Thank you. you how, how can 17 enforcement Thank agents... Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So these follow, the following um, individuals who completed speaker cards submitted after speaker, we, we close the public comment on this item, but I do want to recognize them and we will um, include your cards here in the public record. Kuyai Kwa Jiadahi, Michael Kaufman, uh, Dulce Huerta, Brady Carlos, and Itzel Mayorga. Thank you so much for filling the cards and for your presence. So with that, colleagues, um, now, just keep in mind, for those who are still here, this is merely the, the first step. Nothing happens on policy making without the um, overall support uh, of the council. Council needs to make the, uh, give the direction to staff, to city staff, to craft an ordinance. So um, today's um, action by this committee will um, direct the uh, city council upon approval um, to craft an ordinance on um, the policy recommendations to legalize uh, sidewalk vending um, based on the, uh, the communication from both uh, Mr. Price and I. Um, in addition, uh, once it goes to city council for approval, at that point we'll give the direction, if, if approved by the full city council, uh, to city staff to craft the ordinance and then come back to this committee um, at which point we will dissect the ordinance, continue to get feedback from each and every one of you, um, and with the ultimate goal of having a comprehensive sidewalk um, vending policy that uh, works best for this entire city. So with that, um, we'll move uh, the, um, uh, this item. I do, yes, Mr. Rue. Um, could I possibly offer a friendly amendment? I believe it might, it's friendly. Go ahead, and I have another one for Mr. O'Farrell. Oh, okay, ahead. for item two. If we could add, um, item two reads, request the city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance to immediately decriminalize violations of LAMC 42.00. And if I could add and include a amnesty program for past, pending, and current sidewalk vending misdemeanors. 
I'll take that um, without objection. Okay. And also for Mr. O'Farrell, um, he'd like to instruct the CLA and the CAO to report back on how other cities uh, that have a, um, uh, a sidewalk vending policy in place, uh, how other cities take adjacent and nearby businesses into consideration when permitting sidewalk vending. And we will include that without objection as a friendly amendment as well. So with that, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you for your comments. I do want to thank also um, everyone involved here, the city staff. Um, without objection, we will move this on to council for uh, full recommendation um, and seek the, uh, the direction to uh, legalize sidewalk vending here in the city of Los Angeles. And thank you all for joining. Uh, with point, do we have any general public comment? No general public comment. Okay, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you so much.